So we have our gauge hooked up here outside. We're, we're taking a look at what's happening right here in the coil. And we, we discovered it was 40 degrees Fahrenheit. If I'm not careful, I have a face up there before I'm done. And um, we have put, we put our thermometer on the suction line and we see that it is 50 degrees Fahrenheit. And when, we want to, when you want to measure your superheat, you look at your uh, pressure, you convert it to a temperature, and then you find the difference between the suction line temperature and what you're reading on your gauge as the temperature of the refrigerant in the middle of the coil. And in this case, we have 10 degrees of superheat. All right, so, so with a properly charged system, we have subcooling which keeps a solid column of liquid coming up to the metering device. And then we have superheat, which makes sure we have 100% vapor coming back to the um, compressor, all right? So that is what happens with a properly charged system. Now, what happens if we have uh, an undercharged system? And the one thing I wanna make note of before we get into that is this um, solid column of liquid that, that is here, coming up to the uh, metering device. It's kind of like a, a traffic jam. It's got, it's the refrigerant's backed up. So, you know, it's backed up right here. And as it meters through, then, you know, a half a pound of refrigerant comes through here, pushes on the back and another half a pound comes out. So there, it's designed to have this backup of refrigerant here in the um, condenser coil. So with an undercharge system, let's take a look. So we still have, um, we still have 100% vapor, high pressure, high temperature, superheated vapor coming out of the compressor. Uh, and it is going to travel down the into the condensing unit. It's gonna de-superheat just like we talked about, hit that point. It's gonna start to, um, <coughs> excuse me. It is going to start to change state and it is going to travel through the condenser and it's going to turn. It's going to turn from uh, vapor to liquid, and it's going to condense its way back down. And what's going to happen is it's going to continue to flow through this condenser, and it's going to flow through this condenser. And because we we have less refrigerant, it doesn't back up like it should in the condenser. It continues to travel down here, and then it's going to get to a point where. It, it, it does back up. So what, what happens is this refrigerant doesn't spend a lot of time between this point right here and this point right here to pick up subcooling and it blows through the condenser faster than it should and doesn't back up until it hits right here. So what you'll find, hold on, let's get rid of some of this here. <clears throat> 